Look here, Mrs. Levi, you introduced me to Mrs. Malloy, and rumors or not, I intend on calling on her this afternoon, as arranged. Well, very well, Mr. Vandergelder. Then there's nothing more for me to do but to go back to New York and tell the other girl, the heiress, not to wait. What did you say? Nothing. A word. Heiress. Particulars, Mrs. Levi. I demand particulars. Her name. Her name? Well, uh, money. Ernestina Money. What a lovely, lovely name. Picture, if you will. Hair as shiny as a newly minted dime. Eyes as big and round as silver dollars. Skin as soft and mossy as an old greenback. I can feel her now. Age 19, weight 102, waist 47. Waist 47? Oh, that's with the money belt. Now, I could arrange for you to meet this Ernestina this very afternoon. I ain't got no time, Mrs. Levi. I got to bring my niece Ermagard back to New York this afternoon until she forgets a certain Ambrose Kemper. I could do that for you, Mr. Vandergelder. I know just how to handle such things. Then I'm marching in the 14th Street Parade. What an amazing coincidence. Guess who has been chosen to ride on the main float, the spirit of 14th Street? Miss Money. Her mother was a cash, you know. All right, Mrs. Levi, I'll meet Miss Money at the parade, but I still intend on paying another call on Miss Malloy first. Oh, dear. What races you make me run. Very well, Mr. Vandergelder, I'll meet you on the bench in front of Mrs. Malloy's hat shop at 2.30 as usual. One more thing, Mrs. Levi. Suppose I decide against Mrs. Malloy, and I don't like Miss Money neither. Well, then, I happen to have one more name on my list, Mr. Vandergelder. A name I know as well as my own, but let's not go into that now. It'll come up by itself all in good time. Don't you worry about that. Oh, but wait till you see Ernestina, Horace. A vision. A dream. 